Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Leadership Enigma. Now, here is a question that I get asked all the time. We obviously, as individuals, have strengths and we have weaknesses, or should I call them development areas? And I get asked a lot, should we double down on the strengths or should we double down on the development areas? So I needed to find someone who can help me with that particular question. And in fact, what happens if we do double down on our strengths? Perhaps we end up doing something very creative, something very innovative, something very different to what it was we thought we would be doing. And my guest is a great example of that and he'll tell his story. And then why not? Let's unveil all. Because my guest actually got me to fill out a strength report, which I've done. I have the results here. He has the results. And let's really talk about some of those because that's the advice I give leaders as well. If you do a report, why not share it with the team? I'm not sure about sharing it on an episode of the Leadership Enigma, but what the hell? Let's give this a go and see where it takes us. What could possibly go wrong? Come back to me after the break while we're talking to the wonderful Mark Edwards, who's the founder of The Strength Explorer, where he's helping leaders, teams, and organizations understand and build a strengths-based culture. So much is going to happen in this one. Come back to me just after the break. Hi, I'm Adam Pacifico, and welcome to The Leadership Enigma, a world-ranked, award-winning podcast that's insatiably curious as regards what leaders do, how they do it, and importantly, why. We'll delve into the human doing, but even deeper into the human being and the power of human-centered leadership to drive sustainable change. So whether you're an entrepreneur, business owner, corporate executive, each week we speak to global experts, academics, rising stars, ambitious upstarts and disruptors, as together we will discover that success leaves clues. Mark, it's a huge warm welcome to the Leadership Enigma. How are you? Thanks so much, Adam. It's great to be here. I'm very good. How was that intro? Was that okay? It's fantastic. Maybe stick in my middle name because there's so many Mark Edwards's. It's one of the most standard <laughs> names in there's, the whole of the UK. There's only one of you. So it's like Mark Julian Edwards if you're looking for me. Otherwise, there'll be millions of me. They're always going to be looking for you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the links to you and the business in the show notes as well. So they've got those URLs. But um, yes, Mark julian edwards so here we go we're going to talk all about strengths and that is something that you have really started to focus on i, I want to talk let's go straight to that first question we've all got strengths we've all got development areas do we double down on one or both how do we approach it uh so we double down on strengths right the mistake that we often make and leaders often make is to put equal weighting to the areas where we're not very good right um, and we've all been there. We've all been in those organizations where we've had those conversations with those managers and said, Adam, you're really good at this, but I, I just need to talk to you about your time management. I, I just need to talk to you about your Excel writing or your report writing. Oh, you know me well already. <laughs> and we all look to the heavens and we go, God, here we go. Yeah. Right. And look, it's important to be able to do enough to do your job in in in, in kind of being an all-rounder. But all the research shows, if we really focus in on further developing our strengths, we're going to be three times, you're going to have three times ROI, you're going to have, you're going to be three times happier, you're going to be three times more successful for yourself or the organization. So overwhelmingly, right. it's about doubling down on strengths. Okay, and I thought that was going to be the answer from from some of the research that I read, mm. but I wanted to ask the expert first. So what is the approach to the development areas? Because we can't ignore them. No. And we, we've always got to be working on ourselves. And I'll give you one example. I, I don't think I was a great listener many moons ago. And I think that was a byproduct of maybe the training that I had as a trial lawyer because we were trained to transmit. Mm. So I have worked deliberately quite hard on the ability to just be, be quiet and listen, deeply listen. So we have to do something about that. So, so what should we be doing in relation to those development areas? Not ignoring them, but mm. how do we approach them? Well, I think with you, it sounds like there was a latent talent there. I, I mean, I can't believe that you... you, you well, clearly you did have the potential to be a great listener. Look at what you've gone on to create. The whole remit of this is you actually are able to listen. So it was a, a talent that was there, but because of your professional background and one thing and another, you weren't necessarily that good at it. And right. so you decided to really put effort in. Yeah. As opposed to an area, I don't know what, what we could pick, but an area where you just sucked. You're just not good. You're never going to be good at it. 
Can you think of an example? Oh my God, there are so many. You won't get there. I don't. Any, anyone who knows me or works with me is saying, "Yeah, I've got a huge list over <laughs> over here." I think. Look, a, a, a one is I'm not great with detail. I'm not a detailed person. If you show me a spreadsheet, I start to actually hyperventilate slightly. Right. So the devil's in the detail, and I don't do detail. Exactly. So the answer. There's, so the, there's two answers. First of all, understand where are the latent talents. So for you, yep. listening was a, a latent talent with some more strengths, investment, time, and energy. You become brilliant at it. Like, brilliant. This I is a knew great there was a podcast. reason why I invited you on the show. The second <laughs> thing is, is that we talk about complementary strengths partnerships. Okay. Tell me yeah, about and that. And this is really, really important because it's not all about me. It's not all about you. The context normally that I'm doing this work is with yeah. leaders within organizations. And they've got a bunch of people they work with. So, therefore, who in your team is fantastic at analysis, at detail, at focus, at discipline, yep. right? And partner with them. It's the sum of the parts, isn't it? It is the sum of the parts. And it sounds so simple, but it's so effective. And now I can look back on different organizations I've worked with, and these teams are so much happier because I don't have to try and be perfect. I don't have to try and be an all-rounder. I can yeah. have honest conversations with my team to say, we all know I'm great at this. We're pretty good at this. I'm not so good at that. Who can I work with? Um, I think as I've got older, I've been happier to accept that, mm. you know, warts and foibles and all. And I've got to, and, and these people know who they are at Hydro, are phenomenal at what they do. Mm. And I think the reason that we are a good team with some really large projects that we've mm. got is that we've got different skill sets. And it's there's something quite rewarding and comforting in thinking, you've got that, mm. you've got that. And actually between us, we've got all the bases covered. And and there's I think there's almost something about a, a weight lifted where you where you happily say to yourself I'm really not very good at that and I know it yeah and I think if people <laughs> everyone else knows it yeah too. yeah and I think if, if you've been involved in small startups yep. micro organizations you've got your own sideline projects you're probably working with two three four five people that kind of happens more naturally mm. do you know what I mean oh Adam do this you're really good at that I'll do that and then what happens is when we come, when we like work for these more mature organizations where there's corporate gazillions of people yes working there there is this social conformity you talk about competency frameworks etc hitting all the values to be an all-rounder but we know that doesn't work that's a really great question now because i'm thinking about competency frameworks and, mm -hmm. and many clients have got them many clients are working mm -hmm. on them where at each level or at each role of the organization they start to break down what it is that's mm. required of you mm. is that unrealistic then because no one person is going to have all of these qualities it's going to be a little bit of a mishmash can i just have my liberty to be honest and <laughs> please, speak my mind yeah, please do because I think we're it, trying I, to debunk I, some I rather well. think it is unrealistic okay. and that's a whole industry in and of itself right. right obviously there's certain bases that you need to cover to do a job to fit in an organization you need to kind of cover the basis so maybe to that extent they are yes but then i think we should be reverse engineering it and, to, and even at that recruitment stage the questions to be around what are you great at what do you love to do the most yeah when has been the time where you worked and time just disappeared like what do you really bring to a team that makes you really happy because then you've got people those are good questions joining do you know what i mean and yeah. flourishing um they're going to be able to really add value in a way that's meaningful to them does that happen more in a startup or a scale up than a an established global corporate? Do you think there's just more flexibility at that level? I think there is. Right. I think there is. But that, that said, I'm working with one or two huge organizations and we've been able to 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 make that transition. But the the the, the CEO who I'm working with or the country president is yes. incredibly um emotionally aware, very self aware of herself. And knows where she wants to take the the organization right um so it's less rare but it is possible so and it also i think sometimes takes a leader right at the top of the house to be that self-aware and to be passionate about leadership and culture and then perhaps it makes the the job that you may have or i may have yeah. like somewhat easier uh 100 so that 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 talk, that's around organizational culture that's talk about strengths that's about anything and people who say that's not the case you can just do these things ground up I don't think that is the right. You need to have the right culture and who is the main person who sets the culture. Yes. Is that number one person 
uh, at the very top. So everyone, wherever they are in the organization, they might be the, the newest intern or graduate recruit coming through, or they might be the CEO in the C-suite. Just how important is it for people to understand with clarity their strengths? Because I'm assuming their strengths may develop and change over time as well. So this is something that's not one and done. I'm assuming this is something that's almost iterative. Help, help me understand that. Uh, well, actually, it is something that's fairly set. Oh, is it? The maybe, yeah. I mean, by the time we're sort of early career in our sort of mid twenties, it's 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 pretty set. Okay. Now it might change a little bit. So, for example, you made that transition from yes. you know barrister to, 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 to doing this. So, yeah. because of that change, you're going to be exposed to a whole array of new experiences. So you'd assume that some strengths may emerge or you'll have the greater opportunity to bring those strengths to bear but by and large you know my main strengths are around communication empathy ideation that they've they've kind of been around since for a long time right they're not really going to change it's it's more about can i actually apply them in the context of, of where i'm working okay and what are you bad at what are you what are uh, your developers? what do areas? i suck at so <laughs> uh like you how long have you got my my focus is, is rather poor. Right. Right now, not an issue because I'm a people person. I love conversations like this, so I'm, I'm lost in the conversation. Right. But actually, my ability to focus on my own, like for, for, for a day or two days, is, is terrible. I would look for any distraction. Is there any neurodiversity there? Uh, I mean, yeah. That, I mean, I, I, I'm heavily I, I, chronic I, ADHD, yeah, so I'm, I, I'm, I can understand. I, I've been told I'm ADHD, although I've never fully, the team, thank you, been diagnosed and, and all that. Um, and similarly, like with you, I think it's it, it's detail, you know, high, high, you know, really, really intricate detail, yes. pivot tables, Excel, all that type of sort of stuff. I, I don't enjoy it. I'm not good at. Well, um, you're in the right place then. Yeah, but but so then it's like being aware. I mean, so actually, just be aware of that, right? Just be aware of it, and then think, what am I going to do? How am I going to compensate? Who can I partner with? Who can I delegate to? And that's that's what I've had to do to to mitigate those weaknesses you and i both work with with you talked about global organizations very senior leaders who are leading sometimes hundreds of thousands of people and we always say that you've got to start with leading self really mm. understanding self before you can really start to look at leading teams and then leading organizations so what are your thoughts in relation to just how important it is to understand self and work hard on that self-awareness and that ability to understand strengths, understand development areas, and dial up on. Yeah, really important. I'd start fundamentally with the fact that the best leaders are quite happy. Tell me more. I've had, I've had a couple of people <laughs> in this stu very studio talk about happiness and joy. So tell me a little bit about what you mean by that. Well, they're just okay in themselves. Do you know what I mean? They're not trying to be anybody else. Comfortable um, in their own skin? Comfortable in their own skin. Okay. Aware of their weaknesses prepared to develop themselves, prepared to take some coaching and be coachable. Yes. Um, happy in terms of how they've done and genuinely happy to see others around them grow. That's how I define kind of happiness. I've seen a lot more vulnerability in senior leaders, Mark, post-pandemic. Mm. And I wonder whether those three years, which are almost like some kind of odd dream mm. now, put people into a position where they just had no answers. And, and we're living in a world where no CEO has all mm. of the answers. Uh, and I just wonder whether that in some ways took the mark. I heard this phrase as well from mm. the CEOs, it's time to take the mask off. So are you seeing leaders now who are being a little bit more courageous in their own leadership style, being a little bit more courageous in opening up, being vulnerable, sharing what they're not good at, finding people who can fill the gap? Uh, yeah, I am. Give me some examples. <laughs> um, no, it's just the, I mean, when when I decide when or not I'm going to work with a senior leader, I ask them a barrage of questions. Right. Like, are you coachable? Are you prepared to be vulnerable? Are you prepared for us to disagree at times? Um, are you, are, do you know what I mean? Yes. And, and actually, most of them are okay in an answer in the affirmative. And so great things uh, can happen. One or two instances, I just haven't sensed that. So I haven't worked with those people. So there hasn't been a, a chemistry match, really, has there? No, no, there hasn't been a chemistry match. Um, but essentially, you know when you really, really want something, you really desperately want something, yeah. and you can't have it? It's hard to be really happy for somebody else who has that. Do you know what I mean? Okay, tell me a little bit more about this. Well, there's one or two, like, 
personal examples I've got of, of, of friends of mine who desperately like were, were trying to um and you, you can judge Adam if you need to edit this out or not but for example she was really trying for a baby yeah and and she was failing year after year and she couldn't bring herself to be happy and celebrate okay. each time she saw a new mum and a new baby and she's a lovely person right so I think uh if we really really um we need to be secure that we're actually getting most of the things we want in order to be happy for other people's success. Right. And, you know, you... and, and Mark, I wouldn't edit that out for the world. I'll tell you why, because we you know we're not, we're not identifying anyone, but mm. actually you're talking about a deeply human experience. Yeah. And, and you know, that's my passion here about really focusing on the human being yeah. over the human doing. And I've got some sympathy there because I can imagine that's such an emotive subject and feeling mm. that and so much is wrapped up in it that, there's probably almost an element of they, they feel bad that they can't feel good for somebody else because of and this is like the one of the most positive people i know right but it's just that general idea and i know i've used a very emotional experience yeah. and i hope it's okay to, to to have shared that um but we have to be like as i feel leaders they have to have their glass filled up first they have to feel generally i'm okay with where i am um, I'm I'm making progress here. Yes. I feel quite psychologically safe. I want to give that away. And it's just been my experience where you're looking to coach leaders who are quite unhappy and unsatisfied and quite bitter in terms of how they've been treated or where they are in the organization. It's right. just not going to work as as much. That's really interesting. So that is something, something for anyone and everyone who's watching and listening to reflect on, actually. So now you've helped me understand that that happiness and that joy or that level of contentment within oneself in relation to almost the, the shadow that you cast, mm -hmm. whether you can genuinely be happy and want to lift up others or whether there's a, that's a really, I've not really thought about that before, Mark, and this is why I love doing this show. Well, I just thought let's, really be, let's be really real about it. Yeah. And this is never really talked about on leadership things, shows, podcasts, books, really um, that level of self happiness, uh, contentment within yeah. And then the then the willingness, the wanting to see other people thrive, the the sheer joy and the buzz of seeing those around you kind of rise. In many ways, you've just substantiated this conversation that I've had in relation to happiness and joy, and now how important it is in relation to self awareness of mm -hmm. a leader mm -hmm. and, and how they show up with other people. Um, let me ask you some questions because I know you've got quite a fascinating story to share as well. That if we double down on our strengths, if we really identify what our strengths are, and we'll talk about mine in a moment. I've got the odd one, mm. but if we double down on our strengths, you can actually end up leveraging them in ways that you may not have considered. So you have a story to tell. I do have a story to tell. As a corporate <laughs> being, Mark, you've gone and done something that perhaps people wouldn't guess. Yeah. So I. Um... It, the story mainly started in Mallorca, the Spanish island of Mallorca. Right. And I feel I, as if we should have some music. We should, now, yeah. But... Uh, it, it is. If you've never been, it's it's well worth visiting. Yes, it's beautiful. And um, I was there doing working for a company, doing a three way integration, yep. blah blah. And then that contract finished, and I just it was just that moment where I'm like, now what? I could just go back straight to the UK and carry on. Yes. But something deep inside me was like, I want to do something different. Like you, I'd done loads of self-development down the years. Yes, I'd done a, a similar, a different exercise to, to Gallup, which was around the reflected best self exercise. Right. A lot of people uh, will know that one. Yeah. Yep. And it's basically one where you reach out to people who you trust and respect, and you ask them to share stories of times when yes. you've been at your best. Then yes. you look through these stories, and you feel great, and you look for those signature strengths, right? And their mind were around connection, creativity, and, and humor and play. Right. And I basically thought, I'm not really using many of these strengths. <laughs> you're, being, not, you're being the corporate, the yes, corporate kind I'm not, of thing. <laughs> I'm just not being myself and using these strengths. God damn it. And I thought, I want to have some fun. And I want to see if I can lean into these strengths doing something, some completely different thing, completely different things. I went off and I, with a with a complimentary strengths partner, my friend Steffi, yep. and created a photo portrait book called Faces of Mallorca. Right. And this was a, a book to telling the authentic story of Mallorca uh, through the locals' eyes. Because as anybody who may have been or heard of Mallorca, it has a bit of a reputation for sun, sea, and sand, and Brits, Germans, and Scandinavians. And I was burdened with the question, where are the Mallorquins? What is it to be Mallorquin? Right. So essentially, I did half the 
so we interviewed 59 locals and we photographed them. So I did half the writing. Yes. Uh, and I did all the photography. Were you I, a photographer already at this point? Or? Well, yeah, just playing around. I'm not trained so this is that photographer. Creative yeah. Side. So this is it, right? And this is the really the, the fundamental. I was consciously going into this to say, look, former bosses, family members, loved ones have told me through these stories, I'm a connect. I can connect with almost anybody, right? I, I'm creative. I'm always coming up with ideas, yeah. and I can. I've got a bit of playfulness about me, so I can crack a joke and, and lighten the mood. Can I really, and so I, how can I use these strengths yeah. towards this project? Now, my technical skills around photography aren't, aren't great. I still haven't mastered shutter speed and aperture and ISO and I play around. But it wasn't really about that. It was, can I put that person at ease? Can mm-hmm. I read that body language? Can I think of a creative the way in which we could, could capture them on the sea or in this old typical Mallorquian boat all of that, and I really tried to lean into those strengths as I was doing that project. Right. And it was the first, and there's a few other examples, but it was the first time I thought, I'm not the job. You know, I'm a collection of strengths, and if you put them together, there's a bunch of stuff I can do. Um, so that then led me to do, you know, write for the Lonely Planet. It led me to be an international... Uh, exhibitor at at, at an eminent photographic festival. Um, It led me to do travel show presenting, which is crazy and ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. Right. You know, you've got this corporate career doing HR leadership. What the hell are you doing? Writing a book and presenting a TV travel show. But it does make sense if you think about it through the strengths lens. I've got these certain strengths. Can I apply those strengths to different areas and actually achieve results. See, I love this story. So let me just get this right. You'd never written a book before, had you? No. You're not a photographer. No. And you'd never had anything published before. No. And you'd never embarked on a project like this before. No. Was there a moment where you had this epiphany? And now I appreciate you're you're in a beautiful place in Mallorca, but was there something specific or a collision of circumstances where you thought, I've got to do this? Because there's a courageous decision in there I think I think it comes back to what you were saying earlier right. about your you probably knew you had this latent ability with listening but it hadn't really been developed. Yes. Um I uh, I knew I had I, I I'd always grown up and my mum and dad got the Sunday Times newspaper and always sprawled it out and dad always read the financial serious bits and mum always read the culture and the people bits. And I went towards my mum's side of things. <laughs> okay. And the, the last page of the Sunday Times magazine, I think they still have it, is a day in the life where it just it had one page, it described normally quite a famous person, their typical day from waking up to going to sleep and a, a bit of philosophy and a beautiful picture that encapsulated them. And that that had always uh, stuck there with me. There were some clues then, aren't there? Yeah, there were some clues. And I thought I'd love to do something like that. So this project was actually just that on a bigger scale. Right. The second bit is I had help. So it was between me and Steffi, my co-writer, who had the idea. Right. It wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done it without her and she wouldn't have done it without me. Well, here's the sum of the parts. It's the sum of the again. parts. And you know what, it, and, and, and this brings me on to the next part. It's about how other people see you. Do other people okay. see your strengths and enable you to live into them? And Steffi was kind of drumming into me because I was taking photographs all the time. You're great with people, Mark. You know, I've seen your photographs. It leaves me speechless. Like, you should do something or we should do something. Right. Like, because it's so good. So, look, we're going to talk shortly about Gallup and your report, et cetera. And and in the West, we talk a lot about self-agency. I can achieve anything. I can do it. But I, in part, I disagree a little bit. Okay. And this was a lot about what my TEDx was about, whereby if you're a kind of a respected person, and you say, you know what, Adam, I, you know what I see in you? You know what I see you're capable of? I see I see this and, and, and I see this. You can really achieve that. I still think, much like we raise children, mm. we still need that as adults. We still sometimes need somebody else to see in us something that we can't see ourselves. And that was an example of somebody seeing somebody and, and empowering me, helping me to go there and do that. And let's link this to leaders and leadership and i'm not just talking about <clears throat> excuse my voice i'm not just talking about senior leaders either this is actually a quality within anybody 
So just how powerful is this then of, a, of an individual's ability to see the strengths of others and in some ways help lift them into that, that personal power space? Or uh, it, It's absolutely huge. And it was the subject of my TEDx. So what was the title of the TEDx? Uh, seeing strengths in others. I mean, I forget the whole title. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh. Five versions of it. But maybe you can put a link in at the, at the I bottom. Will do. I will. But what I decided to do was to take that exercise that I described, the reflected best self exercise. I worked with 18 women across five countries, all leaders. Yeah. Uh, so they've got the stories, they've got the signature strengths. And my hypothesis was, can photography, now that we've done all this work together, can photography help to anchor in those women's strengths? And, okay. and it did in, in quite profound ways. How, how do we understand what you mean by that? Could photography help? Uh, so it, it probably helps if I tell a story. Tell a story. I love so, a story. <laughs> so you're in the right place for exactly. a story. Uh, so I came across this lady, uh, Vera, and two years prior, her her husband had had died very sadly, and she just started to date again, and and had a partner called Bernard, and then I I worked with her doing this process. So we went out, we got the stories and some of the qualities that came back through the stories was this idea of effervescence, like life, you know, yeah. nurturing, the love and nurturing. They, they were the, they were the two main ones. Right. Her strengths. Yeah. So I was, uh, over in the Hague, uh, at that time doing, doing some work. And I said, where do you feel alive? And she was, she was from the area. And I said, she said the beach, because the beach is where I went with my dad to, to play in the sand, build sand castles. I just felt so protected. So we went to the beach and her partner, Bernard, happened to be there. And for the first time, I asked one of their partners to join in a photograph. Right. And I said, just look into each other's eyes. And they looked into each other's eyes. I started to take pictures, but it, it felt awkward. But then I disappeared. And uh, she was saying, I love you. He was saying, I love you. What's mine is yours. And it was just the most emotional moment there on the beach. And there was just a moment where she's looking into his eyes. And I, and I photographed that. And that reinforced massively for her this power that she has right. around nurturing. Around nurturing. And she's applied it massively since to, to her work, to her relationships, um uh, on another uh, then a few minutes later she just started running around the beach like and and she was wearing like this like pink top with a kind of floral pattern she was smiling she was looking really radiant you could see the spray of the sea going through the air a little bit of the sand coming up under her footsteps and again i photographed that moment right that was about the effervescence and who she really really is so you know, we're going to go through report, your report kind of thing, and it, and it has a place. But imagine having a really strong anchor like that. And so what I'm doing to answer the original question is I'm projecting the positive way in which all her friends and family saw her. I'm projecting how I see her. And the camera in some kind of weird mystical way is projecting how it sees her. So there's a power in really leaning into how you're seen by others uh, at your best. I love that story. And is there a power as well? I'm assuming those, she's got those photos. Yeah. In, in some ways, are those an immediate reminder to step into her strengths, to be that person who is truly who she is? Yeah, she, she produced this little, little photo book. She produced this little tiny thing, this little tiny, tiny, incy wincy little thing that right. fits into her handbag and she carries it everywhere. It's a constant right. reminder. Wow. Uh, other of the ladies have got like something the images on the phone some have got massively blown up in their living room but it's a great visual reminder and i guess my message here is not everybody obviously needs to go out and take a photograph but yeah. where you're in a lead in an influential position right you've got other people around you and you want to empower them you want to lift their confidence it's worthwhile telling them the strengths that you see in them and it's worthwhile thinking about innovative ways in which you can really reinforce that for them so that it begins to be believed. So this is, I'm hearing so many things, and I'm going to link this to human-centered leadership, this curiosity of other people, the, the, what's the vigilance to, to, to see and hear the clues which allow you to identify the strengths in others, and then having, <clears throat> excuse me, and then having the ability to communicate and say to people, 
and let me help you understand what your strengths are and and lift them up even higher Something yeah very powerful in that isn't there it is and the listening thing is really great because often you know monday morning how was your weekend right but it's like well that's interesting that's been like you know two weeks out of out of four you've yes. actually said you've you've gone to the theater and and you've described visually what was really great about it i hear a bit of storytelling there you know so it's living at a, listening at a, at, a, at a deeper level to what actually what do people enjoy doing where do they lose track of time yeah where are they really happy where are they engaged where, where are they in a state of flow but <clears throat> do you think there's times in people's lives when something seismic may happen where people have that kind of epiphany or they or they suddenly have a reality check of who they really are and what they really want to be doing uh yeah it can be the, well yes but but i think what's already in interesting especially if you listen to a lot yeah. of podcasts like we well you're doing it all the time but you listen to it, a lot of the famous people that we know um they really only stepped into their greatness once somebody else had pointed out they're really good at that thing right i remember listening to some podcasts maybe i don't know who it was but i think uh woody harris yeah, woody yeah what's his real name he plays he plays woody, woody in cheers oh i can't remember his I know, name, but yes famous. i know i wish i in our age yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah he really only stepped into being an actor because that many people said you're fantastic at it you should really really go for it and he was like really yeah yeah so often the 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 the, the, the people who've, who've, who've really made it had somebody behind them who saw something in them who were inviting them to step into their, their particular strengths, their particular area of greatness. Well, let's try and work out what I should be doing, Mark, shall we? And, and yeah. do as I say to leaders is when, when you, you get a report. Firstly, there are lots of reports around. Uh, I know we've got a lot of IP at work and there are a lot of, a lot of uh, other assessments out there. They're used to great worth. But how should people really view assessments? Um, and psychometrics on themselves well i think do a bit do a bit of research make yep. sure it's kind of like you know well validated and makes sense and has a good reputation uh and to be honest it's the uh it's the quality of the and always i would say have somebody help you debrief it yes. I mean, read it for yourself but then have somebody else a coach or whatever help you debrief it i think that's essential isn't it um and look you can have some okay coaches who who really take you through it in a step in a prescribed way yeah but my whole approach is not to put people in boxes so i feel <laughs> almost a bit torn that we're about to go through a report <laughs> let's go but, put me in a box but, mark come on no, but um you know we're gonna we would bring it to life with real with who you really are we'd step outside of this and we say okay you've got some words here like a ranger and maximizer but, but let's get real and talk about where you bring these things to life and is this correct and okay do you know what i mean so you'd have somebody i think interested in you at a fundamental level who doesn't have to necessarily stick through the process that said let's go through a process well let's go and and let me as i say let let, let me do as i actually advise leaders is right five strengths so so i did this particular i did the gallop strength so this is the clifton finder. strengths finder uh, clifton. report yes. thank you so clifton strengths finder report thank you and the top five strengths that came out for me are a ranger maximizer communication adaptability developer now we're not going to bore everyone by going through all of this Richter, <laughs> to what I, I i may or may not be doing but let's let's pick let's the, the top one's a ranger yeah what's that all about did you read it i had a quick scan of it but then i thought i was going to benefit from your wisdom yeah what do you think of it i think it was pretty accurate in relation to who i am and i actually handed this across a big shout out to naomi at work where i said naomi just have a look at this and she does a lot in assessments and she was smiling and thinking to herself and she said out loud she went oh yes so that's normally a good time where yes. someone is looking at and then thinking yes i can i see this is you or i see how this is mm. relevant so a ranger is, is like a conductor of an orchestra okay uh they make stuff happen they can see they, they realize that a project is only the sum of its parts right well that's a phrase we've used as well exactly today. um and so these people like you uh like to undertake big projects like to have many component parts and like to in in, in a people-centered way make sure those independent parts talking to each other so that stuff happens fundamentally um you're the sort of person who would be very bored if there weren't big projects, if, if everything was very predictable, uh, there's an element of, and I can see that with, with combinations of other strengths, of, right. of chaos that you quite enjoy. 
uh, you know, you you enjoy being that stable. <laughs> Hopefully, not the creator of chaos. Creator, you, you enjoy being that stable sort of leader who can oversee and make sure stuff stuff happens and people work together who should work together effectively. Okay, and then that might link as well to number two is maximizer. So, what do we mean by maximizer then? So, maximizer is, and it actually, when I read it, I felt more appreciative of, of being a guest on your podcast. Oh, well, I'm intrigued at that. Let's go straight to that. Why? Because, what is, it, again, it's as you read that in a holistic way. Yeah. What did you think? What did well, you feel? Well, because, you know, the word associated with maximizer is excellence. Okay. You know, you really strive for excellence. Uh, it, it might be in your own way. It might not be so predictable. But you you think, like, long and hard about who you can have on this podcast. I do. You know, so, therefore, it, it made me, once I saw that, even more grateful and appreciative to, oh, okay. to be here. So thank you. Um, you know, this is about taking good things, good concepts, and really making them great. You know, you're not someone who's satisfied with, okay, mediocre, it'll do, uh, should, should be able to get by if we do that. You really are quite keen that the client has a, a really great experience, the listener has a really great experience, that you deliver something that has real practical, excellent value. So it's that search for for excellence. Okay. Now, I, I've and got... by the way, we would normally have a bit of a chat here. I'm kind of going through them. This is not how you'd coach somebody. No, I've, but... I appreciate you be asking yes. me lots and lots of questions, which I wouldn't have the answer to. But let me just ask you another thing, because obviously when I look at communication, that's always been a big theme in my life. It was yeah. a big theme in my life as a, as a lawyer. It was a big theme in my life within law enforcement. I think my mouth would get me in and out of trouble. So when you see that, and maybe when you see that combined with the top five any thoughts yeah so you're somebody who knows a lot of stuff you know a lot of stuff you know a lot of legal stuff you know a lot of technical training stuff but when i hear you like on being when you're interviewing people when i hear you in this conversation yes um there's no fluff in what you say you're you're consciously trying to make things as simple and as practical to understand and people who are really strong in this we share it it in this strength of communication have the ability to take quite sometimes complex data, complex information, and just make it very simple and digestible and straightforward yeah. for anybody to really listen and understand and you bring it to life in quite a compelling way. I'm going to go through this because I think yeah. it's it's good for any person. It's not just about leadership. Any person to regularly get some form of feedback mm. uh, so we're, we're as, as self-aware as possible. What should I be doing with my life, Mark? Arranger, uh, maximizer, communicator, adaptability, developer. Um, what do I want to be when I grow up? Well, uh, I can't answer that because <laughs> uh, I'm just me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think the question is, are you doing stuff now that plays upon those strengths? I'd argue that you probably are. Yeah, I think I am. Do I you know what I'm, I mean? I think I'm in a bit of a, a sweet spot in so, relation to what I do. Yeah, I'm very like, grateful for it. Because we, we before we went on air, you said, "Well, I, I, you know, these are the points I want to hit, but let, let's see how it flows. Let's see how it goes." Yes, that's classic adaptability language, which right. is your fourth strength. You know, you're not to, you don't want things to be overly structured. You want to be quite natural. You kind of like a little bit of let's see how we go and, and move. Things we should along. say we do know each other. We do. So we're not strangers to each other, no. but we did rock up today and say, Hey Mark, how are you? So what are we doing today? Yes. And, and that might frighten a lot of people. And so that's when I need to be self-aware because I could actually get a guest in who freezes at that point and thinks, I, there's no way I can operate yeah. in that environment. Yeah. And then others who will come in like yourself will say, let's have a great, curious, freewheeling yeah. conversation. And we'll talk about stuff that we know and love. Yeah. Uh, so this brings us on to, but so answer, to answer that question, I think you, you you just you are using your strengths, right? You're you're thinking I want ma maximizing, yeah. Want people to have the very best of value, want excellent in terms of of takeaways. E even how you edit these show reels and everything is is, is That's really Jesse. well, Jesse, <laughs> really great strength <laughs> partnership. You know, you're really using your partners to to great effect. Development, you are developing people. You want people to be better. You're thinking about how can I develop myself. You're thinking about. What can the listeners take in terms of really useful that will develop? People? I want this podcast to actually have an impact, Mark. right? Really, genuinely, yeah. and that's what I also get frustrated by that—that that it's not having the impact to the level that I want it to. What would you what, say well, more about billions that? Billions of people in the world. Yeah, I, I just I want what we're doing to be as valuable as possible to as many people as possible. Mm. 
That's so, what I'm striving to do with with this. And I, and it doesn't take a lot to to put a smile on my face. I, I might get one email from someone who says, "Hey, I just mm. listened to the podcast with Mark, and I loved X, and I'm using Y." Or I've got to tell a funny story. I was at Heathrow. Yeah. I haven't told this story. Yeah. My wife just laughs at me when I tell. And I was at this story, and someone came up to me and said, "Are you Adam Pacifico?" Wow. I said, yes. And they said, I listened to your podcast. And we had a very quick chat. And he said, oh, I sent you a book and uh, and I have that book. And it's someone I must uh, connect with again. <laughs> and then he walked off. Mm. I had a massive smile on my face. Yes. That one person <laughs> in the middle of T5 came up to me and said, you had a Pacifico. Now, that's a, bit, that's a bit moronic, really, isn't it? But there's an element there of, okay, it's always nice to be appreciated, but there's an element there of, Oh, so there are people who are watching and listening and it's made them think or it's made them happy or it's given them something. That's pretty cool. Very cool. And the question I'd probably ask you yeah, is if your goal is to have way more impact and we maybe define that, but if it is to have way more impact yes, in terms of reach, then in being aware of your strengths, understanding the combination of your strengths, how could you leverage them even more to serve you, to have that impact? It's a great question. I think you've got me thinking. There's a number of things that you've said where I've thought, I haven't thought about it like that or haven't seen it in that way. And that's why I love doing this because I've been asked before, you know, what keeps you going with the podcast? And and one of the very first reasons for doing it is I learn every single time mm. I come into the studio and I meet someone, I learn. And I increase my network and I just meet another human being who's passionate and excited about what it is that they do. And it's super cool, mm. which is why you probably won't even realize how much time has passed already no. during this conversation. You'll have almost no, it's like, it's like a Vegas casino. Yes. That there's no clock in it. <laughs> and there are windows, but time has, time has almost become immaterial. And lots and lots of people have said, oh, oh, is, are we done? Yeah. And we've been going for 40, 50, sometimes an hour. So something's going on, Mark, where two people can just sit down and have a conversation, sit in each other's presence, and time has become not immaterial, but in some ways it's become a little bit of an obsolete concept. Mm. Have I gone all deep and weird suddenly? I don't know. You You're are, getting you, me to reflect. You already were a bit weird, but uh, no, it's fine. <laughs> I did say we knew each other. I just want to come back to something you just did mention yeah. about being conscious about who you actually are dealing with, because I think you and I are a bit similar in, a, in that way. But, um, you know, leadership, it's too often there's general concepts of leadership that are taught. Yeah. But actually what's quite rare is how do you lead that sort of a person or that sort of a person or that sort of a person because you know your natural charismatic uh you know communicative really might not work with somebody who is a little bit shyer who's more introverted who's more very detail oriented etc mm -hmm. so how do we flex according to other people's strengths yeah what makes other people come alive how do we do that and so it's it is being very self-aware in terms of what our strengths are but it is being really, really aware in terms of what floats other people's boats. How do we adapt to their personal yes. style? Yes. And their needs. Let me finish off by asking you some questions. Obviously, you are the founder of the Strengths Explorer. What are your top tips for any leader of any size business as regards the importance and how to create a, a strengths based culture? So let's start with what is a strengths based culture in simple terms. A strengths based culture is. A culture whereby everybody in that organization are aware yep. not only of their own strengths uh, 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 quite a deep level i'd suggest rather right. beyond a questionnaire uh, but also how to apply them in the context of the work and also how best to work effectively with other people in the organization in relation to those complementary strengths partnerships i was discussing earlier uh, regardless of how big the organization, because I know you're working with some huge, yeah. you know, iconic, yeah. global organizations. So regardless of size. Yeah, regardless of size. Does it make uh, it a little bit more complex if we're talking about a 50-person business or a 150,000-person business? Well, I tend to do it team by team. Right. Uh, so, no, because you always, a team is a team. A team is only really between 10 and 20 people max. Okay. So that that makes it much so uh, deal with it in clusters. simpler. But the, it, the there's some... 
uh, I guess, elements that help you get there in terms right. of strengths-based culture. You need to have good habits. Right. So when I go in and do this work with different organizations, I'm also trying to inculcate, introduce very simple habits. So for example, recognition. Yeah. You know, if I regularly appreciate you and show you recognition for when your strengths uh, are at show, number, number one, those strengths are going to grow and expand. Right. Number two, you're going to have a higher degree of psychological safety, especially if I'm your, your boss. Uh, and number three, you're going to be able to be more psychologically safe and vulnerable with me. You're going to be able to share some of your weaknesses in areas where you're not so great. Okay. Um, so, yes. How do people get hold of you so that you can help them with their strengths-based culture? What's the best way? Well, they can't find, find me on LinkedIn, but they must remember to include my middle name. I was about to say, which is? Well, so it's Mark Julian Edwards. You'll find, and I'll put that link in there. Uh, but they can also go to my website, www.thestrengthsexplorer.com. It very handily has the word sex in the middle of it. <laughs> oh, I only, I sorry, I've just looked down on my yeah. piece of paper. What are you talking about? Yes, yes it, does. it does, doesn't it? Yes, it uh, I only does. really realised that um, I'm, I'm with, with my huge attention to detail after I'd registered the domain. <laughs> Then I thought, I'll oh, sod it. it. It's a bit catchy. <laughs> right. Um, because it's all, to, all written together. It is. You are, I see. And right. it's nothing to do with well, sex, obviously. There's a lesson for someone somewhere in relation yes. to de developing domain names or picking go. domain names. Uh, listen, Mark, uh, have you had fun? I've had a lot of fun. It's been great. It's been really lovely to, uh, yeah. Has this played to your strengths? This. <laughs> it has played to my strengths. So we've, uh, we're, both, we're both high on communication. Yep. So, and we're both quite adaptable. So we haven't, it hasn't been too rigid, has it? It's probably no. been chaotic, but in a good way. I think so, in a good way as well. Listen, thanks very much for coming to the studio. I appreciate it. It is good to see you. Um, I can't believe you didn't bring the book in. Just want to say out loud. I know, I just didn't, I didn't think of bringing the book in. That was crazy. We can oh, imagine that we've got a beautiful picture of Faces of Mallorca that we're sharing everybody. Now. Which now we don't have. But now we don't have. Anyway, well, thanks yes. for that. We'll yeah. try and uh, get a picture of that from the internet and yeah. maybe uh, embed it into the, the YouTube video. Lovely. But thanks for being a star. Appreciate it. Thank you, Adam. Thanks. Thanks so much. Join us again next week for more curiosity and insight with the Leadership Enigma. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Get in touch with me on LinkedIn or visit us at www.leadersenigma.com. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe on all your major podcast platforms and on our dedicated YouTube channel. Thanks again for joining the community.